Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Uh, Armchair Historian video, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Time to learn the original link to the video from Armchair Historian. If you haven't seen it yet or you just want to watch it on your own without me pausing, fair enough. Click on it. Send you right over there. Uh, let's learn World War II from the Romanian perspective. Uh, I think these videos are amazing. And uh, Ooh, an EU army. This video was brought to you by... Um, oh, another good one. Okay. Actually, this one seems sort of good, too. All right. Let's go. Despite suffering military defeats at the... After the First World War, Romania was awarded new territories despite suffering military defeats at the hands of the Central Powers. The map was redrawn, not due to its victories, but through the defeats of its enemies. This turn of fortune, however, would later become their undoing. The collapse of the Austro-Hungarian and Russian empires allowed Romania concessions to lands rich in national heritage, effectively doubling its territory. This dramatic expansion was more than a geopolitical shift. It was the fulfillment of the long-cherished dream of a greater Romania. However, these newly acquired regions each came at the cost of ethnic division and is this the current? I know Romania is a big country in Eastern Europe. I mean, by you know European country standards. But is this still the territory it has? Is this not like Serbia in here somewhere? Moment of the long cherished dream of a greater Romania. However, these newly acquired regions each came at the cost of ethnic division and brewing geopolitical tensions. Suddenly, Hungarian, Bulgarian, Ukrainian, Jewish, Romani, and German minorities comprised about 30% of the population. In some of the newly acquired areas, Romanians themselves were in the minority. Diplomatically, Romania's expansion led to entanglements with neighboring countries. Hungary coveted Transylvania's return. Bulgaria aimed to regain southern Dobruja, and the Soviet Union set its sights on Bessarabia. Given this precarious situation, border security became a top priority. The Romanian government thought that their best chance of securing these borders was through joining the League of Nations, alongside aligning with France's Eastern European security system. To counter Hungarian threats, Romania also allied with Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia to form the Little Entente in 1920. A mutual defense treaty with Poland in 1921 aimed to safeguard against the Soviet Union. However, the 19th... So Yugoslavia was only around for like 25 years as a legitimate country, right? 30s or... brought a... Wait a second, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, what am I... I don't forget it. Resurgence against the Soviet Union. However, the 1930s brought a resurgence of German and Soviet power. Germany backed Hungarian claims on Transylvania, while the Soviet Union, coveting Bessarabia, was viewed as an unreliable ally due to Romania's strong anti-communist sentiment. The Second World War was a conflict unlike any other in human history, Monster. forcing many of the smaller powers, like Romania, to choose between the Axis or the Allies. If you guys are interested in this, guys, and you heard it here uh, in this reaction I'm doing, please make sure to use the links and promo codes from the Armchair Story and the original link to the video, again, top of the description. Thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Call of War, you can choose your side without worrying about the imminent threat of invasion from your real-life neighbors. Call of War is a free online PvP strategy game that lets you choose a real country and lead them to victory in the Second World War. Declare war on your neighbors, forge alliances, trade water. with allies, and engage in huge, weeks-long, 100-player matches on both PC and mobile devices using a huge array of units and weapons. One of my favorite aspects of the game is the ability to develop... Be right back, guys. Okay, sorry, I got my water. Ooh, I didn't do a like. 
develop and execute a variety of different long-term strategies to ensure complete and total victory. Support our channel by clicking the link in the description to sign up for Call of War. If you join within the next 30 days, you'll receive 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. France, a key ally of Romania, appeared increasingly powerless against German aggression. Hold on, look at this little sliver in uh, Switzerland. That's interesting. Sorry, all right. Russian ally of Romania appeared increasingly powerless against German aggression, beginning with Hitler's remilitarization of the Rhineland in 1936. Similarly, the League of Nations appeared ineffective. Isolated and seeking a powerful backer, Romania cautiously shifted its stance toward Germany. The Fuhrer, requiring Romanian oil for Germany's impending war efforts, redirected Hungary's focus to Czechoslovakia, thus temporarily reducing tensions with Romania. Hitler also made conciliatory gestures, promising to respect Romania's borders in exchange for economic cooperation. Despite strengthening ties with Germany, Romania maintained a balanced foreign policy, preserving good relations with France and establishing new connections with Great Britain, seen as a counterbalance to France's diminishing influence. Against the backdrop of shifting alliances, two pivotal forces dominated Romania's internal King politics, Carol. King Carol II and the radical Iron Guard. King Carol ascended to the throne in 1930 under unusual circumstances and aimed to consolidate power, aspiring toward a royal dictatorship. His rule deepened internal conflicts, especially regarding ethnic minorities. In contrast to Carol's tolerance of diverse ethnicities, the Iron Guard strongly opposed moderate views on minorities. This fascist organization, emerging from a group of nationalist university students, criticized the political system for being too accommodating toward Jews. Voted most likely to purify Romania. Most likely to invade another. And Hungarian. Purity of essence. The political system for being too accommodating toward Jews and Hungarians. It advocated for a Romania centered on ethnic Romanians and proposed a radical, brutal solution to the minority problem, purifying the nation by eliminating those they viewed as undesirable, with a particular focus on Jews whom they accused of undue influence and ties to the Soviet Union. The tension between King Carol's authoritarian ambitions and the Iron Guard's radical nationalism led to a volatile political climate in Romania. The Iron Guard, seeing an increasingly powerful rival in Carol II, engaged in a power struggle directly challenging the king's authority. This internal conflict unfolded as Romania's external alliances wavered, illustrating a nation struggling with its identity and direction at the very moment Europe was descending into war. Even before German armies stormed into Poland in September 1939, Romania strived for neutrality. Following the Munich Agreement in 1938, it had secured a commitment to its independence from both Great Britain and France, similar to Poland's guarantee. However, Romania's position during the early stages of the war was a delicate balancing act. While leaning toward the West, Romania welcomed Polish refugees, yet simultaneously inked beneficial trade agreements with Germany under threat of conflict, much to the Allies' dismay. Internally, King Carol opposed the Iron Guard, even though he employed similar paramilitary and anti-Semitic tactics. His abolishment of the 1923 Constitution strengthened his grip on power. However, tensions escalated when Carol ordered the execution of Iron Guard leader Corneliu Codranu in 1938, prompting the group to assassinate Prime Minister Armand Kalinescu. So it wasn't that he wasn't completely in disagreement with the Iron Guard's thoughts and policies, but just that they weren't loyal to him. So. In 38, Makes prompting sense. the group to assassinate Prime Minister Armand Kalinescu in 1939. In retaliation, Carol then executed hundreds of Iron Guard members. 
These efforts to suppress the fascist movement were complicated by geopolitical shifts in the summer of 1940. With France, a crucial ally succumbing to German invasion, Carroll turned to Germany for support, softening his position. I mean, what do you do at that point? I, I say the same thing about uh, like uh, Sweden and Finland. What do you do at that point? You, what you you not only do we have the benefit of hindsight and knowing what uh, these you know this war would end up doing, but what do you do? Uh, are is America and France and the UK going to come all the way to your rescue in uh, in um, Eastern Europe, especially when you're already not on great terms with the Soviet Union, and now Germany just took out France and. Uh, yeah, uh, of course, I'm not going to blame people in precarious positions positions geographically on siding with Germany at, at this time. doesn't mean that everything they do is just going to get a pass, but what are you supposed to do? Well, position against the Iron Guard and implementing anti-Semitic laws. Oblivious to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, Romania was confronted with Soviet demands for Bessarabia and northern Bukovina. Under German pressure, Romania ceded these territories, resulting in the capture of over 40,000 Romanian troops stationed there. Smelling blood, Hungary and Bulgaria then pressed their own territorial claims on Romania. To maintain regional stability, Hitler brokered the Second Vienna Award in August 1940, resulting in Romania ceding northern Transylvania to Hungary and southern Dobrija to Bulgaria. This territorial session in 1940 soon sparked a political crisis, undermining King Carroll's authority. In an attempt to stabilize his reign, Carroll appointed General Ion Antonescu as Prime Minister. Though this soon backfired, as Antonescu ousted the king in a coup d'etat, forming a new government with the Iron Guard in September 1940. The fragile coalition between General Antonescu and the Iron Guard crumbled quickly. Their government fixated on excluding Jews from Romanian society. The more I learn about stuff like this, the more I realize just how great or how lucky like, for one, Great Britain is to, to be separated from mainland Europe, and America is to be much more separated from major hostile uh, people, because especially if you have a good navy and trade, um, as uh, especially, you know, Britain did, then when stuff happens, when you can't count on other people's aid for a full-on ground invasion, that's going to be hard to stop someone, you at least don't have the possibility of a ground invasion. They have to beat you at sea and then transfer all the people over the channel to get to even start an invasion in Britain. It can't be overstated just how important that is. Um, because when stuff doesn't go your way on mainland Europe and you're on mainland Europe, there's not many options you're going to have. Society saw a their government fixated on excluding Jews from Romanian society saw a clash in approaches. Antonescu favored a systematic exploitation of Jewish properties, whereas the Iron Guard, in disarray from previous purges, resorted to anarchic violence against Jews and other minorities. This culminated in a horrific pogrom in January 1941, where the Iron Guard's rebellion in Bucharest led to unspeakable acts of violence against. Romanian Jews. Antonescu, more concerned about lawlessness and his authority, quashed the uprising and expelled the Iron Guard from power. Antonescu's purge of the Iron Guard did not leave Jews any safer, however. Instead, his regime perpetrated widespread massacres and deportations in Bessarabia, Bukovina, and Transnistria. Sorry. Despite the regime's anti-Semitism, key figures like King Michael and Queen, Queen Mother Elena, along with others, actively worked to protect Romania's Jewish population. Wilhelm Filderman, president of the Jewish community, notably engaged in discussions with both the king and Antonescu, successfully preventing numerous deportations. ...and deportations in Bessarabia, Bukovina, and Transnistria. 
This Romanian-led genocide, separate from the Nazis' final solution, resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Jews. Characterized by its brutality and efficiency, these actions reflected the deep-seated anti-Semitism of the time and Romania's willingness to autonomously persecute Jews, far from Nazi coercion. Aligning closely with Nazi Germany, Antonescu permitted German troop movements through Romania for campaigns against Yugoslavia and Greece. Esteemed by... Wait, what is that? Liber, uh, libertate, egalite, fraternite. What, what, what is that? What is that from? Through Romania, four campaigns against Yugoslavia and dumb? Greece. Esteemed by Hitler, Antonescu's regime gained stability. Hold on, sorry. Germany, who's far from Nazi coercion. Aligning closely with Nazi Germany, Antonescu permitted German troop movements through Romania for campaigns against Yugoslavia and Greece. Esteemed by Hitler, Antonescu's regime gained stability and stronger ties with Germany after removing the Iron Guard. His ultimate aim was to recover Romania's lost territories, especially northern Transylvania, still controlled by Hungary. By supporting Germany's war effort against the Soviet Union, Antonescu hoped to leverage his loyalty and persuade Germany to compel Hungary into returning northern Transylvania back to Romania. Joining Operation Barbarossa on June 22, 1941, Romania committed more troops than all of Germany's other allies combined, with nearly 900,000 men by October. The campaign's early success included reclaiming Bessarabia and northern... 900,000? The more I think about that, that's crazy. Wasn't it a total of 3 million troops that invaded Russia in Operation Barbarossa? Does that mean... Or is it just 3 million German troops? Or, or did that include the Romanians, which would mean that a third of Barbarossa was Romanian soldiers? That doesn't sound... Is that the case? Bukovina from Soviet control, sparking public reclaiming Bessarabia and northern Bukovina from Soviet control, sparking public jubilation in Romania. Romanian soldiers, often motivated by aspirations to restore pre-war borders and indoctrinated to believe they were fighting Judeo-Bolshevism, were initially enthusiastic. For some, this fervor was rooted in a mix of religious fervency and prevalent anti-Semitic and anti-communist sentiments. After recapturing Bessarabia, Romania, urged by Germany, pressed further into the Soviet Union. General Antonescu, driven by the ambition to reclaim further lost territories, approved sending Romanian forces into the arduous siege of Odessa from August to October 1941. Confronted with robust Soviet defenses, the Romanian army relied on traditional infantry tactics, facing high casualties and strategic challenges. The siege, marked by intense combat and significant Soviet counteroffensive, underscored the Romanian military's limitations. German air support became crucial, especially encountering Soviet advances, highlighting Romania's dependence on its Axis allies in this critical campaign. The fall of Odessa led to a heinous pogrom against Jews by Romanian troops. Declared the capital of the new Transnistria governorate, the city experienced severe oppression under its Romanian occupier. Yeah. So you're you're going through an area that you think that was like you believe was rightfully yours and you're taking it back. There's that animosity there that's like that they tried to, you know, take that and how you see unfairly. And then the fact that there was a lot of casualties in your attempts to take back these areas means that. Uh, there's going to be a lot of bloodlust on uh, people's mind. The primarily Ukrainian region suffered from food extraction and forced labor, and also served as a dumping ground for deported Romanian Jews, with up to 120,000 dying in the harsh winter of 1941-42. to 42. These actions reflected Romania's independent policies rather than German coercion. The pace of advance slowed into 1942, yet Antonescu committed more troops, notably in Crimea and the Caucasus, aiming for Stalingrad. In the grim winter of 1942, Romanian troops, aligned with Germany in the Battle of Stalingrad, faced a dire situation. Under-equipped and thinly manned, 
with divisions like the 1st Infantry operating at a mere quarter of their required strength, they confronted a relentless Soviet offensive. Fierce artillery barrages and brutal cold of minus 20 Celsius battered the Romanian lines. Their anti-tank guns, largely ineffective against Soviet armor, left them relying on grenades and Molotov cocktails. Despite initial resistance, they faced retreat or encirclement. The General Laskar group, encircled and refusing surrender, was decimated, with only a single battalion managing a desperate escape. How do you beat the Soviets? It seems impossible. Like, if you gave every country during World War II, or just, like, kind of throughout history, uh, like, statistics, like, in a video game, the HP, bar, the health bar of the Soviet Union would just be so freaking large. It's like, even if you conquer... Like, look at Paris. Paris and the Soviet Union seem like complete opposites in, in how uh, they were taken over, where Paris... Once you reach there or even threaten there, it's like, okay, whatever. And then Soviet Union, it's like you, you can reach a bunch of places and expect them to, to surrender, and they just don't. I, I want to know how people think the Soviet Union would do if it didn't get British and American aid. Um, th that isn't me trying to like say they only succeeded because of that. It's a genuine question as to like what does it take to just like bring the Soviet union to their knees and just tap out i mean political strife in the late 90s i guess but in wartime especially around world war ii it just it seems like an unkillable machine decimated with only a single battalion managing a desperate escape the fourth Romanian army, trapped in the encirclement at Kalak Nadanu, witnessed six infantry divisions and a cavalry division fall. The aftermath of Stalingrad was devastating. Romania suffered 181,000 casualties. This number represented 16 of the 18 engaged divisions, amounting to half of its active military forces. Additionally, the Romanian Air Corps lost 73 aircraft. A subsequent Soviet counteroffensive further devastated Romania's military capabilities, severely weakening its frontline forces by February 1943. Post Stalingrad, the alliance between Germany and Romania began to deteriorate. The Germans unfairly blamed the Romanians for the setback, which fueled increasing skepticism in Romania about the outcome of the war. Although the Romanian army, greatly weakened by the Stalingrad disaster, received modern German equipment, it was not enough to make up for the substantial losses in manpower and materiel. In 1943, while much of the Romanian army retreated back home, some units remained, notably around 66,000 soldiers in Crimea for anti-partisan operations. Their evacuation, delayed by Hitler's refusal, began only in April 1944 amidst a Soviet offensive, resulting in further Romanian casualties. By spring 1944, the conflict reached Romanian soil. A Soviet offensive in March pushed German and Romanian forces from Ukrainian territories and parts of Bukovina and Bessarabia. Temporary German support stabilized the front, but the Soviets' August offensive shattered the Romanian units. The reconstituted 6th Army, under Romanian command, was encircled and destroyed, further weakening Romania's already battered military forces. As Romania faced mounting losses in 1944, the inevitability of defeat dawned upon many, but Antonescu resisted surrender. Opposition leaders, along with King Michael I, a figurehead until then, launched a coup d'etat on August 23rd, ousting Antonescu and signaling a dramatic shift in Romania's position in the war. King Michael declared democratic restoration and formed a new government, demanding German withdrawal. When refused, Romanian forces expelled German troops, a swift reversal unanticipated by Germany. After aligning with the Allies, Romania contributed over half a million troops to the fight against their former Axis allies and successfully reclaimed Northern Transylvania by October. When he said unanticipated by Germany, I mean, did Germany think that Romania would just like just crumble and just all of them die or do they think that the animosity towards the Soviets was enough? Maybe this that the animosity towards the Soviets 
was enough that they would continue fighting. Um, Despite heavy casualties, Romanian forces advanced into Central Europe. And again, like, you know, a country is going to look after its own survival and any kind of thing that makes it look like they're, you know, joining. I, I say this for any country, current day included, of just, at the end of the day, people care about their own survival in their country, I believe. Um, and... A anything on it on the face of that is all in purpose of that that survival and so when people get you know confused when over surmount uh insane now that things are working against each other's favors that um, alliances start to break up. It's like, well, what exactly did you think would happen? Concurrently, the USSR established a communist regime, culminating in a dominant communist victory by late 1946. The final peace treaty, signed on February 10, 1947, ceded Bessarabia and northern Bukovina to the USSR and southern Dobrogea to Bulgaria, while restoring northern Transylvania to Romania. Navigating shifting alliances, Romania's wartime choices, marked by anti-Semitism and Nazi collaboration, but also reflecting a genuinely difficult geopolitical position, led to significant consequences. The costly shift to the Allies culminated in post-war territorial losses and a transition to communist rule, reshaping Romania's political and social landscape for decades to come. What was the alternative, though? So, the alternative, as much as I don't don't like communism, um, I'm American. I'm, I'm, I make no secret that you know I'm not I'm not a giant communist fan. <laughs> um, but I mean, if 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 not that, it's it's acting as if you could have chosen a different path than the fork in the road during World War II when the tides were changing after Stalingrad, and that you could have changed. A, a path that doesn't lead to your destruction and you keep your own non-communist sort of government. I mean, you know, um, really cool video, as always. So, uh, really nice. I want to start looking at some of the Great, uh, the Great War channel. It's called The Great War. They have a lot of... Um, I, I love World War One and World War Two. I have way more to learn about World War One, although there's still a lot of stuff, including Romanian perspective of World War Two, that I don't know about World War Two. I hope that made sense. I did not phrase that well. Uh, so super great video. Uh, love you all. Hope you guys are all doing well. Would appreciate any answers to any questions I had or any disagreements you have with me down below. Would love to see any comments. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next video. Bye, guys.